Just realized that I never even did an introduction for this vlog, so hello guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys enjoy this weekend's vlog. I'm really excited about it. I feel like I'm gonna be doing a lot more than last weekend's vlog, so stay tuned. Okay, I just started watching Dating Around for the first time. Okay, I need to hold my camera. <laughs> um, and I, I have just a few like first impressions. So first of all, I'm only on episode two right now, and this one I'm struggling to get through. If you've seen it, you kind of know what I mean. Um, but the guy was wearing like the exact same outfit the entire night. So is he just going on multiple dates in one night? Because I don't, I don't get down with that. And also, it like causes me anxiety watching other people go on dates, and it makes me like holy cow like that looks so stressful and I get anxious like I'm watching this and like my stomach is tense but at the same time I'm like actually already hooked because I think it's like kind of cute I mean obviously first dates are always like always really uncomfortable and like you don't really know what to talk about so they're obviously awkward but I don't know once they warm up it's so cute and I'm so about it now like I said I'm on episode two now which is Ben's and he's so precious bless his heart I feel like he's just so like nervous and it really shows and it's kind of like painful to watch because I'm like cringing the entire time so far but I'm not gonna stop I want to get through it and see if he like loosens up I mean obviously like so far everybody's been drinking on the date which like I don't blame them I'd be doing the exact same thing and not only okay first dates are hard enough these people are being filmed like let that let that soak in for a second. I need to stop being so critical because I would probably be a mute. I would be so scared. I wouldn't know what to say at all. Like I'd have to have a few drinks before even going into the date. So those are my first thoughts or first impressions. Um, so if you guys are also watching this, let's like bond over this. And also if you know about like the outfit thing, like he's wearing the same outfit the whole night. So like, does he just wear the same outfit on each date? Or is it like multiple dates in one night? I'm just kind of confused by that. So help a girl out. You guys. <laughs> I cannot make it through this episode, I don't think. I feel so uncomfortable right now watching this. Absolutely no judgment towards him. I would literally be in the same boat probably if I were on this show. But oh my god, it's so uncomfortable. He like doesn't know what to say. And also the girls on his episode are all so so different which is like kind of weird but whatever oh my gosh also this show you don't have to watch like episode one to understand episode two so honestly if you haven't seen this I think that you should watch episode two and just understand what I'm talking about like this guy is so precious but I don't know I don't know if I'll be able to finish this one honestly I don't <laughs> Um, I would say good morning, but at this point it's 11 o'clock, so it's pretty much noon. I ended up staying up way, way too late watching freaking Dating Around, you guys. It was so addicting. Um, and my overall thoughts, I would say I love it. I'm going to continue to watch it. I think it's so cute. And dating is a very scary thing, and they make it just look very fun and cute. So I think that you guys should all watch it. I will say that one episode was a little bit cringy, but the man was just like as precious as could be and just nervous and he was just so sweet and like a genuine guy. So um, that was a really cute episode. Even though it was a little bit like more uncomfortable to watch, it was just super sweet and at the end like the girls were just so nice. Um, so that was always good too. But it is Friday today and I am gonna go test drive some more cars. I pretty much have decided that like this is the weekend that I need to buy a car because mine is just, it's there. It's, it's at its last straw and I need to be prepared. So I found a few that I'm gonna go test drive that are a little bit more in my area and I am just like hoping and praying that I find one that is perfect and everything that I need so I can just like buy the car and be done with like not having great air conditioning and my car making really weird noises and all that so it's just really stressful <laughs> but I just kind of finished getting ready a little bit this is my hair and makeup I have not worn my hair straight in like 
like my hair fully straight in a really long time and I kind of like it. I need to get my hair done though, that's for sure. I want to like leave the darkness at the root, but I kind of want to get some like lighter streaks going through like kind of like a balayage vibe. But finish getting ready quickly and because it's like already so late in the day and honestly I'm so exhausted I need a coffee like immediately but um, I'm gonna hopefully leave my house in the next like 20 to 30 minutes to go at least test drive one car my dad and I are supposed to go tomorrow thank God because I hate going alone especially to do things like this because it's like I don't know how all of this works but I'm gonna give it a shot again today like I'm not against going alone it's just a little uncomfortable but you know what that's fine i'm gonna grow from that putting yourself outside of your comfort zone is always a good thing so i'm gonna um quickly do that and hopefully like every place that i've gone my arm hurts i need to lean down <laughs> every place that i have gone so far has let me test drive the car alone so i'm thinking i might bring my camera along with me and show you guys the cars that i'm test driving so you guys can get a better idea of what i'm looking for well it's definitely been way more than 20 or 30 minutes but whatever it's fine i'm wearing this white tank top and just these like cute little biker shorts with air force ones this is a tank top that i showed in the last vlog i posted from amazon and these biker shorts are from forever 21 they're so comfortable i don't know if they still have them i got these like two or three months ago um if they are still in stock i will link them for you guys but it is now 11:58. i am starving so i'm about to walk out the door and probably stop somewhere and get like Starbucks maybe um, and then go find a place to test drive a car. There's like a few different ones that I can test drive so I just have to figure out which one's like the most convenient and then go for it. You guys, are you freaking kidding? My coffee got on my shirt. But the coffee I've been loving is um, a caramel macchiato with extra caramel. It's so good. I'm like obsessed. You have to get it. It's definitely not healthy, but cheers. I lost one pound this week. Might as well. Okay, I'm test driving and I forgot my camera in my car, but it's so cute. Don't know if I love the interior. It's like a dark chocolate brown, but kind of cute though. I don't know. Um, I'm so excited because I just, well, last night I um, made a Windsor order and in my last vlog I showed you guys a dress I picked up from there that is like so beautiful and it's like just a taupe color and it's just really flattering and i'm just very into it so i got um a few more things from there i ordered a pair of shoes and i think three clothing items i want to say um and i'm really okay once i just found a bug ew sorry about that um i just can't wait to show you guys what i picked up from there it's probably going to be like in a collective haul because i think i'm going to make a purchase from misguided and then also a place called Luna B. Um, if you guys have heard of that, if not, check it out. I just saw it last night and it is freaking cute stuff. Depending on when that stuff comes in the mail and if I end up placing that order, I think I'm gonna like Windsor be my order for like this paycheck and then next time I get paid, make another order of stuff. So it might be a second for that one to be up, but I'm so excited for the stuff. So honestly, just like check out their websites or not. I feel like they have like the cutest stuff right now, um, like all their new arrivals and I'm just here for all of the pieces. Good morning, you guys. It's Saturday morning. It's 9.30 and I'm about to hop on a call with Gabby at 10. I have like a lot to tell her and um, I'm just excited. I used to kind of get a little nervous before our like Zoom calls because I, I mean, if you've ever been to counseling, had a life coach, anything like that, like it can just be nerve wracking and like it's hard. Well, it's, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it's hard for me to like open up and be vulnerable because like I do that very very easily and quickly but I don't know it can just be like weird sometimes because it's with somebody that like you're just meeting but I don't know I am just so excited for this call um, so I will tell you guys how it went but I do really want to talk to you guys at some point about circle boundaries which is kind of what I've been going over with Gabby for the last like week or two and um I it's like honestly it changed my whole perspective and it's changing my life I don't want to say it's completely changed my life yet because I am obviously still learning about um like how to have circle boundaries and you know how to move forward with them in your life so I learned about like what they were my mind honestly was blown because I mean obviously y'all understand a little bit more whenever I kind of explain it to you but I'm just so open and vulnerable with everybody that it's like 
you have to have certain people in your life that you can do that with. You really shouldn't be like going around to every single person in your life, your coworkers, your family, your friends, your acquaintances, like telling them like deep things about your life and um, like traumatic experiences, you know, like you don't really owe that to anybody. So I'm just like learning whenever, or I'm learning to not disclose with certain people, if that makes sense. Um, but if not, I'll explain later. And hopefully I can explain it well because I like, my mind has completely shifted and I hope that I explain it in a way that makes sense to you guys because obviously I'm not, I'm not a professional at this. I'm just like so excited about what I'm learning that I want to share it with you guys. Okay, so I just got off my call. It's now 11. Ugh, every time I get off a call, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like emotional, uncomfortable, but not in a bad way. Like I feel like whenever I say those things, sometimes those words obviously have like a negative um, context to them, but I don't mean it in a negative way at all. It's just like whenever you are working on yourself, obviously it's not supposed to be a comfortable experience. Like anything that you're comfortable doing is something that you're used to and like you're not gonna grow from. So I'm like learning to be happy with the uncomfor uncomfortableness, if that's a word. Definitely have like this really big sense of like excitement though at the same time. Like yes, I'm uncomfortable and scared and like scared but in a sense of like i'm scared because i don't want to like let myself down if that makes sense after like you know you're trying to be this different version of yourself but like i i under all of that i feel so excited because there's just so much beauty in admitting that like you need help not that it's like even help but you like want to be a better person. There's so much beauty in like realizing my old habits aren't working for me anymore. My my uh, survival patterns are not helping me anymore, you know? And uh, I think sometimes you need like certain people in your life to help guide you through that in a new way of thinking. And I'm just, I don't know, I could honestly probably cry. I'm so excited that I've just, I'm just excited that I've taken this step because I've felt this way for a long time that like I want to talk to somebody and I want like somebody to help guide me. Finally doing it, it's just really exciting, you know, and I'm just feeling happy with myself for taking that big step because I know that, you know, a lot of times it can just be something that you put on the back burner and like never end up getting to until you're like in your 20s or 30s. So being so young, I just think it's important to you know take advantage of this time and just like learn all about yourself and why you do the things you do and all that so i don't know i'm just happy that i'm doing that <laughs> okay just in my hair and makeup and was like gonna put on a cute outfit but then i was like you know what i'm comfy as hell so <laughs> i'm staying in this outfit but i am about to go test drive with my dad in nashville so fingers crossed that it goes well um and i have nothing else to say you guys i have no idea what just happened to me i like passed out it's almost five o'clock holy cow i don't know whenever i got back home from test driving that one car i was so freaking tired so i passed out and i'm about to go to another place now to test drive one more the one i drove earlier i just didn't love eh, so sucks because i'm like really trying to get a new one soon <laughs> But I'm gonna go drive this one and see if it's any better, so. The time that we have all been waiting for is here. Not really, but I have continuously mentioned circle boundaries throughout this vlog, but I have not explained it yet. So that is actually where I'm going to end the vlog on me explaining circle boundaries and pretty much all about them. Bear with me, I honestly suck at explaining things sometimes, I don't know why. So I'm actually going to read a little bit about them from the book by Lori Jean, which is the founder of Pivot, and then also a little bit from the module that my life coach and I are working on together about circle boundaries. So let's get into it, shall we? So it says here, relational circle boundaries is the second module used for pivoting to healthy relationships. This is a clear and concise revolutionary boundary system created to define how you are choosing and maintaining your relationships. It is helpful for developing greater intimacy and for providing safety. It takes the all or nothing out of being relational. By gaining clarity on your parameters of your relationship and how to practice boundaries, you will simplify your life and improve your relationships. Okay, so now that I've read that little bit out of the book, I kind of want to 
talk about it on a more personal level if that makes sense so um, really quickly this is like my little circle boundary drawing and the circle boundary is made up of five categories so you have your inner your good your semis acquaintances and the outer category so obviously your inner is going to be well this is all individualized so for me a characteristic that I need in my inner category would be unconditional so personally for me that would be like my God because that is an unconditional love then for my good a characteristic that I need um, from somebody that's in my good category would be reliability and trust so those are probably like the two main things that like a person needs to have in order to fall into this category of my life for my similar I mean for my semis it would be just a shared and a shared interest because people in your semi category are people that you have similar interests with but don't really want them knowing like deeper parts of your life and then you have your acquaintances which these people are just people that you need to be cordial with that's the characteristic that I put in that category so for instance like y'all in the past I have literally been like at Kroger and just started talking to the girl that's like checking me out about these like deep things going on in my life and I'm starting to realize that like it's such a waste of time and it's not that this girl's necessarily going to go and like share my business but that's just not somebody that needs to know like that much of your life and who you are and then your outer category would be no contact so the people that would fall into this category are people that you are unable to have a healthy relationship with you can't trust them um, they bring out really bad habits in yourself and you just cannot have any contact with them um, and I want to talk quickly about how this has kind of like opened my eyes because as I was kind of just saying I am definitely a vulnerable person which means I wear my heart on my sleeve and I open up very very easily with people now that's not necessarily always a bad thing but sometimes for people that do wear their heart on their sleeve or are just super vulnerable and just very open um, you know can sometimes share information with the wrong people and that ends up you know leading you to being hurt so the reason it's really good to have boundaries in your relationships is really just to protect yourself so for instance say just like I said earlier you know somebody that is in my good category I really need them to be a trustworthy person well say I think somebody's in my good and I'm telling them a story about something my family's going through and then I find out something I told them that was super personal they ended up sharing with one of their friends and then it got back to you now I'm not saying that that person is okay for doing that it still hurts really really bad but whenever you take a step back and look at it from your relational circle boundary standpoint it's almost kind of on you because if this person has not been a trustworthy person in the past and you need somebody in your good category to have trust you do not need to be sharing that kind of information with them anyway they've proven to you that they can't be trusted therefore they need to be in a they need to be in a lower category then you're good because they cannot be there for you you cannot have a healthy relationship with somebody and have them that big of a part of your life if you can't trust them this has just helped literally open my eyes so much to who I disclose information with and it's so crazy because like in the past I've always over disclosed I've always shared so much with people and I'm like at the end of it I'm like why did I just explain that to them like not like it's not saying that I like them any less, but it's like you don't owe that person anything. You do not owe that person like the fight you're going through with your boyfriend, your parents. You don't owe them anything. And the people that you really should be telling those things to are the people in your good and in your inner category. Um, so it's just crazy now that I know about this, like the steps I'm taking or just the realization that I'm making whenever I'm, you know, like in conversation with people on a daily basis. It just makes me realize hold on like is what we're talking about really something that I want to be sharing and then I'm able to catch myself whenever I start to talk about something that you know might be a little personal with somebody that's not really that close to me so that's just been super cool but another thing that I've really liked about this is the fact that it's you know obviously like I said it's individualized so you know whenever I'm looking at what I want in a good category which would be you know someone like your best friend like it kind of allowed me to look at myself a little bit because in relationships you have to be able to reciprocate those same things you can't have somebody that's trustworthy if you're not trustworthy you can't have somebody that is reliable if you're not going to be reliable so it's been really cool to kind of just like allow it to 
help me look at myself and see what characteristics I have and how I am in my relationships. So it's been just eye-opening all around. So I just wanted to share that because it is, it's like slowly changing my life and I just think that it's such an important piece of information that I wanted to share it with you guys. I'm about to end the vlog, but I do want to say that I'm so mad. I did not end up buying a car this weekend, and I'm actually like starting to move further away from wanting a BMW just because I'm realizing how expensive they are to maintain, and if anything were to happen to it, it would just be super expensive, and I'm not sure if that's something that I want to deal with at this point in my life. So I am still looking for cars. I did have such a good time test driving them this weekend. I definitely liked some of them, but I just wasn't like willing to pull the trigger on the ones that I test drove. So the search is still on, unfortunately, but I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.